Polycystic kidney disease is a condition characterised by the development of multiple cysts within the renal tubules of the kidney and is the most common hereditary renal disease. The normal functional unit of the kidney is the nephron, made up of a glomerulus and Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. Blood filters through the glomerulus forming filtrate, which then passes through the tubules undergoing secretion and reabsorption, eventually forming urine and passing into the ureter and bladder. Overall, there are around 1 million of these nephrons in each kidney. In polycystic kidney disease, these tubules develop into cysts, which become filled with fluid and can range in size from being microscopic to several centimetres in size. The process can start even in utero, meaning in the womb. As the tubules become cysts, they cannot carry out the normal filtering function. Therefore, the number of functioning nephrons begins to decrease. This is worsened by the fact that as the cysts grow, they compress nearby nephrons, also making them dysfunctional. Initially, this may not be seen to have any clinical impact, as the remaining number of nephrons may increase their function to maintain the glomerular filtration rate. But, as the disease progresses, and more nephrons are affected, the remaining ones cannot make up the difference and overall renal function then deteriorates, eventually reaching end-stage renal disease. By definition, the presence of structural injury makes polycystic kidney disease a form of chronic kidney disease, with end-stage renal disease being defined as needing renal replacement therapy like dialysis or a transplant, or a GFR below 15 millilitres per minute. There are two main types of polycystic kidney disease, both caused by genetics. The first is autosomal dominant, with two main types, one coming from mutations in PKD1 on chromosome 16, which codes for the protein polycystin 1. This is affected in around 85% of cases, and is involved in cell-to-cell -cell or cell matrix interaction, cell cycle regulation, and calcium transport. The second, coming from mutations in PKD2 on chromosome 4, coding for polycystin 2, which codes for voltage-gated cation channels. More recently, a third form has been hypothesized to be caused by mutations in GANAB, coding for an alpha subunit of glucosidase 2. These proteins directly affect the renal tubular epithelium. The autosomal dominant version features the second hit phenomenon, where the mutated dominant allele causes cyst formation once the normal allele is hit and becomes dysfunctional, which has near 100% penetrance. Around 25% of cases do not have a family history which could be due to subclinical disease in the relatives, or it could be a new mutation. By age 75, between 50 and 75% of patients require renal replacement therapy. The other type is autosomal recessive, which is significantly rarer than autosomal dominant. It often involves PKHD1 on chromosome 6, which is a gene coding for fibrocystin a protein involved with the generation of cilia in renal epithelial cells and has a role in forming the lumen of the tubule. It is estimated that mortality is around 30% in newborns with this version. Initially, polycystic kidney disease may be asymptomatic, but with time, hypertension can develop due to the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system activation Hematuria can be present due to vessel damage within the cysts, as well as pain or fullness, which is most commonly in the abdomen. Polyuria, meaning an excessive urine output, can be a feature because the cysts can make it more difficult to concentrate the urine. There is an increased risk of urinary tract infections and renal stones, and there is also a link 
between autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and the presence of aneurysms. For example, in arteries of the brain, which can predispose to intracranial hemorrhage, which is estimated to be in 10% of patients, or other arteries, like the aorta. Other extra renal findings are liver and pancreas cysts, mitral valve prolapse in 25%, diverticulosis, and even aortic dissection, which could be related to the aneurysms. These can be a clue to suggest autosomal dominant rather than autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, as the latter typically features liver fibrosis and widening of hepatic biliary ducts. The diagnosis might be initially suspected from the history and physical exam, and from there imaging like ultrasound, CT or MRI is done. In some cases, potentially with family planning, genetic testing can also be done, but this is not routine. In general, as part of the diagnosis, the number of cysts present accounted and correlated with age. For example, below the age of 30 years, there must be either two cysts in one kidney or one cyst in each kidney. Between 30 and 59, there needs to be two cysts in both kidneys and at the age of 60 or above, there should be four cysts in each kidney. Overall, the autosomal dominant variants typically feature normal sized kidneys with larger cysts, while the autosomal recessive features enlarged kidneys with more numerous but smaller cysts. Tolvaptan, which is a vasopressin receptor 2 antagonist, has been shown to have a beneficial effect on the renal function, and ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers can be used to interrupt the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and reduce hypertension, which helps to reduce the risk of cardiovascular complications. Linked to this, statins may also be started to reduce that risk. Lifestyle changes have some evidence of being beneficial, like a ketogenic and time-restricted diet, and it's also recommended to avoid contact sports. Antibiotics are regularly used because the cysts can produce a breeding ground for bacteria. As the disease progresses, renal replacement therapy may be considered, where the function of the kidney is replaced by other methods. The mnemonic AEIOU can help you remember general indications, such as severe acidosis or electrolyte imbalances, intoxication, including drugs or medication, fluid overload, and uremic symptoms. This could be extracorporeal dialysis, like hemodialysis or hemofiltration, where blood is taken out of the body and undergoes diffusion or filtration in another machine before being returned to the body. Or it could be peritoneal dialysis, where dialysis fluid is placed into the peritoneal cavity and changed at intervals, which allows for a higher degree of freedom for patients. Renal transplant is also considered to be a form of renal replacement therapy.